a bit sooner, please do so. So for your seated pose, um, it's just going to be a really a short sort of meditation, but you use your blanket to, um, to get your knee supported, but also to get to support um, your ankles. So that your blanket slightly rolled um, under your knees and it's slightly rolled sort of under, under your ankles. So in such a way that it's not uncomfortable, but that you're okay, um, you know, you've got enough support. And then closing your eyes. With your spine being upright. Just start noticing the body, but your physical body, sort of be aware of the positioning of your feet, be aware of the positioning of your hips, be aware of the positioning of your spine, the head, being upright towards kind of pointing up towards the ceiling. And perhaps with the chin a little bit down, pointing down towards the chest. As if you're looking into your bellies, if you're looking into your chest. The hands resting down onto your lap or wherever you feel comfortable. And sort of start just breathing along your spine. So on the inhale, breathe up towards the ceiling, towards the crown of the head. Now on the exhale, let the whole exhale be like letting go, releasing down towards the sacrum, towards the, the sitting bones. Now on the inhale again, as if someone's pulling you up towards the ceiling. And notice as you do that, notice what's happening sort of internally in your body. How do you feel? And stay with your breath and your sensations and feelings. Let everything be the way it's supposed to be. Nothing changes. So the breath stays the same. The awareness of your body stays the same, but a bit more enhanced. Become aware of your shoulders. Become aware of your jaw. Release the shoulders. Release the jaw, release the tongue inside your mouth, relax it, let the tip of the tongue stay 
behind your top teeth, resting gently. And just start noticing anything that appears. If your mind starts to wander, you start noticing the sounds, you start noticing the fireworks. You stay with that and then gently again move back to your breath or to your physical body. Be open and receptive. Be calm and relaxed. And slowly become aware of your body again. Start opening your eyes if you haven't done so already. And just roll your head, turn your head to the left, then gently back to the middle, and then gently to the right. Lovely, and then come back to the center. Take your arms up wide, inhaling up, 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 extending the arms up. And as you exhale, turn the palms away from each other and down, point them down towards the floor. And on the inhale, take the arms up. So palms up. On the exhale again, palms away from each other, pointing them down towards the floor. Lovely. Let's just stretch the legs for a little bit and then come into the, the next pose. So we've done uh, yin yoga before, I think, and um, I'll just talk you through it in the beginning, but then I'll let you kind of go into um, the poses and stay in the poses in quietness um, and in your own time, sort of noticing the sensations. And slowly extend the right leg, sorry, the left leg behind you, and then bring the knee back and extend the right leg behind you and then bring the knee back. One more time, repeating both sides. Just stretching away. I'm having fireworks around me here, so in case you hear noises, it's not coming from my house, but it is around here. And just use um, your spine now to move in 
any direction that you wish to wish it to move. So from cat and cow. Then perhaps into sort of movements where you're going to look down towards your right um, hip. So lateral movement of the spine and then move into look down into or to the left hip sideways. And then eventually when you're ready, come into the, the pose, which is um, going to be so using your blanket. So it's going to we're going to go into um, uh, into uh, Charles pose and then um, frog pose. So Charles pose which is suitable for pregnancy, as you know, is, is um, wide-legged child's pose. And then extending, so use your blanket so to support your knees and extending your hands, arms away from you and drop your head down. Now here, just notice perhaps the sensation in the in your in your uh, spine so perhaps as you pushing your tailbone towards the, the your sitting bone down towards the heels perhaps notice the stretch in the spine so the lower spine and the upper spine with the arms stretched out. Release the belly down. And notice the breath. Staying in extended child's pose. Staying with those sensations in your body and staying with your breath. So you could be getting some sensations in the inner uh, groins and inner thighs, but primarily in the child's pose, primarily it's, it's at the back of your, um, it's in your spine. So the elongation, your spine. Lovely. And then slowly walk your hands forward so that you can come, sort of, so not forward, back, so towards your body, so that you can come onto your forearms. Now, make a bigger space between your knees and make so now we're getting entering into a frog pose and this pose is is very good for um for you anyway for during pregnancy so you might want to to keep your knees um separate as much as you can as as so as wider as wide as you can you might want to bring the toes together and heels separate you might want to bring the toes apart. So play with these sensations. So you don't want to get any sensation in the knee. So there should be no pain in the knee. The only uh, sensation that you want to get is the sort of 
inner thighs. So the stretch, a mild to moderate stretch in the inner thighs, not too much of a stretch. So it should be um, between, on the scale of one to 10, it should be somewhere between two to four, um, especially in pregnancy. If, so try not to go towards the edge of five, but go to a lower uh, or milder edge because of relaxing in the body. So really be um, sensitive to all the um, uh, responses that you're getting from the body. So play with that edge. Notice the sensation in the inner thighs. Play with the position of the feet. And then with your hands, it will depend on how far you can get to. So either staying with the, your hands to being your arms being on in your, uh, so you resting on your forearms, or you can, or you may want to stretch your arms in front of you and allow yourself to drop down with the head down. Now this will depend on whether you feel comfortable in the pose. So please let yourself be comfortable in it. So whilst um, I can do it, we're all different regardless of whether you're pregnant or not. So listen to your body. So scan your body internally or mentally, noticing those sensations, noticing whether you're getting anything from your inner thighs. Noticing whether this is a mild to moderate range. And by all means, staying and feeling comfortable in the pose. If your shoulders become tired, if you're coming onto your forearms, and if your shoulders or your elbows become tired, you might want to use your bolster and just rest your head on your bolster. So you bring your bolster sort of up to your chest and you rest your chest. And, oh, goodness. Sorry. This is not going to be a very uh, comfortable meditation pose. I've got fireworks behind me, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> If I put the music on louder, my help. So rest your head on the bolster, perhaps resting your body on the bolster, and let your arms stretch or rest by the by the side of the bolster so that there's no pressure. not forgetting the sensations that you're getting in your inner thighs. So if you feel that you've dropped a little bit further or you've completely, um, you're not getting any sensations, which means that it's fine, it's okay. It's just that your body's kind of used to, gotten used to that um, part, that, that pose, and then you, dropping a little bit further into the pose. So 
but just remember that you don't want to get any pain. And then if your head would turn to the right side, and turn your head perhaps a little bit to the left, just to adjust the neck as well. And staying there for a little bit, noticing your breath. And then slowly being aware of your physical body again. By putting your hands down onto the floor. And then gently pushing yourself up to come onto all fours. And then bring the knees together. Because we've had the legs um into this um pos position right now so we're going to just come over so that we can stretch the legs out in front of us so as you're stretching the legs in front of you just do everything ever so gently because you come into the yin pose and then you, the coming out into a pose afterwards, the counter pose afterwards, which is called resonance pose, you get all the sensations then in the legs, the fascia kind of returning back to, to normal or to original state. And perhaps just notice the um, the feedback that you're getting from your body right now. So whilst the legs are stretched out, whether you're getting any sensation in the inner thighs, perhaps even in the calves. So anywhere in your body. And then let's place our legs a little bit into a little bit wider position. So make sure that you put your, uh, to bring your sitting bones higher up onto the blanket, stretch onto a blanket or a cushion, stretch your legs in front of you. And bring your uh, bolster in the middle, so between. Now, leave the bolster for now. And so just as you're sitting here, so notice um, where, how your feet are positioned. So normally feet kind of turn up, to, um, so with the, with the toes pointing up. But if you feel that the feet will drop back and so that you don't have any sensation here there is no tension at all that you want to release then do let the feet drop out so that the sense the 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 legs become a little bit more relaxed and then bring your hands to the side of your body so that you're kind of supporting yourself your back is being supported Elongate the spine. And then on the exhale, slowly walk yourself into a forward fold. So rounding your spine, if that's okay for you, or if you feel that the rounding the spine isn't very comfortable for you, then keep the spine straight.
And to start with, let your head gently drop down wherever you can reach. Now we're not aiming sort of to walk our hands forward to go down and reach the floor. The aim here is to let gravity take over the sensation, take over the, the heaviness of the body. So relaxing the upper body. Hence, if it's okay to round the spine, your spine will be rounding even more. Then notice the sensation in the back of your legs. The stretch. So this is the only, this is the time where if you feel, if you have any sensation in the, underneath your um, knees, so at the back of your knees, it's okay, so long as it's not a pain. So there should be a gentle sort of like tugging or stretching sensation at the back of the knees. You might get some sensation at the back of your lower spine. Maybe some in the upper back as well. Now the difference between the yin and restorative is that in yin classes we attain or yin yoga we um, attempt to to stress the body or to bring stress on the body on the on fascia. In this case, the tensile stress or the stretch in the back of the legs. And the, um, the gravity, we use gravity here to just to perhaps go a little bit further and maybe bring more stretch and stress in the back, um, in our back. Now, the reason why I use, I'm using the bolster here is because I want you to use this pose, not just as a um, yin pose, I want it to become restorative. And that's when you actually bring the props towards you to bring them towards your head. And so stop this gravity completely taking over and stretching you even more where your belly is going to go um, too much into compression over where you're going too much of a compression over the belly. And so use the bolster so pick up the bolster and use the bolster kind of diagonally put it so that you can put your forehead on top of the bolster and sort of stop gravity taking over the whole body but actually kind of use it it's still there um, but you with that pressure of your forehead against the bolster you kind of stopping that compression and using this more as a rest. So it becomes more restorative or perhaps a combination of, of yin and restorative. And let your body become adjusted to this pose. Become aware of your breath. Let your breath be natural. At no time 
think that this is a must to stay in this pose for this long time. If you feel that you want to come out of the pose and if you feel that your back is hurting at all or anything, that any sensation that isn't really comfortable, do either adjust or come out of the pose entirely. So it's really your decision how you do, do it. And when it comes to breath, use your breath in such a way that it's natural and calming rather than making it or using it or you doing some kind of pranayama practice that is strong that it that it's that or the the strength of the breath is the one that that um, helps you stay in the pose so let your breath be natural inhale, natural exhale. Perhaps relaxing your jaw. Perhaps noticing and scanning your body again, noticing if your legs or feet, calves, any part of your legs are relaxing more. And then slowly becoming aware of your physical body again. And slowly supporting, using your hands to support your bolster, to remove the bolster first. Open your eyes if you haven't opened your eyes already and slowly walk yourself up into seated pose. So because we can't go into uh, a lying flat down into the floor, onto the floor, you can use a pose so long as you are okay with that and you support your um, your sitting bones so higher. You can actually lie down flat on the floor, but with the, your um, sitting bones on top of the bolster so that you can just feel the stretch in the lower back. And that is done only for a brief period of time in your case. Um, you can, when you go postnatally, you can do it uh, a bit more. So grab hold of your thighs and just bring your thighs one by one so that your feet are down, completely down onto the floor. Now, bring yourself, so this is only for a brief period of time. So either using so your your bolster is is um, much softer than than this one which is fine so support yourself so that you can come up onto the bolster briefly onto the bolster and then slowly lower yourself backwards i'm sliding off And then stretch your legs or bring your legs up. So you're not staying here for long. 
your sitting bones are off the floor, so your your lower belly is is also your um, uh, not lower belly. You almost your lower back is kind of in an upright, a little bit upright position. So we're not staying here for too long. Just notice the sensation. Notice the sensation in your legs. Notice the sensation in your spine. And then bend your knees. Come off the support, roll over to the side and come up into seated. You're okay? Yeah, good. Okay. So from that, we're going to go more into the shoulders and into, um, so hips and shoulders. Now, I'd like to go into the, um, the side flexion as well in the spine. So the pose we're going to do is first the, the square uh, pose. Now you have two options and please, so I'll just show you how you either get into, so make sure that you are still, that your sitting bones are up on the blanket all sort of supported so that you've got enough support there. And so you can come into um, sort of like cross-legged position. So with the right um, uh, leg in front of the left, so if I turn this way, you might be able to see it better. So that your shins are crossing. So the idea is, I'm not really sure why is this called square, because it's more of a triangle, but to me, but um, it, it is square, it's called square. So I guess with the hips kind of being in line with the, the knees, it's more of a square, but rather than the in, in, inside the thighs is the, more of a triangle. So your left um, heel is under your right knee and your right knee, your right heel is in front of your um, left uh, knee. Now you can stay here given that you have the external rotation of your hips here on both of your thighs both ways. So you can stay here if you feel okay. If you feel that you could, you're not getting any range, any, any sensation in the um, thighs. So you might want to bring, so roll back a little bit onto your hands and bring this right um, foot on top of the left knee. Now, rather than using your hands to push your foot into this, try just using the strength of the, the leg. Now, and see how that feels. If you feel that you're okay to sit back into the original pose, then you stay there. If there's so much gap, I can't really see, I can only see that you like this. So if that's really not helping, then take the leg back down. So what you want to do is just to get, the other option is take that bolster and place the leg on top of the bolster. So what you want is just that sensation, pretty much more of a sensation in the right um, outer thigh than in the left outer thigh. And then slowly you can stay here or you can walk yourself forward. So there should be no pain in the knee. Again, so just the stretch in the outer right thigh perhaps a stretch alongside in your back, but more of a stretch in the, in the thigh. Now, if moving forward 
is not comfortable because of the compression with the belly, then we'll just come up into seated again and then just use yourself. So use your right arm. So take your right arm up, extending up towards the ceiling and then walking your left hand away from you, making sure that you're getting enough length on the right side of the body, keeping the head in line with the right arm. Noticing the stretch in the whole of the right side of torso, but also the stretch in the right arm, uh, sorry, right arm, outer hip. Now you might want to stay here, you might want to bring the elbow, the left elbow down. Just stay at your right range of motion, playing your edge, noticing the sensation, perhaps using the, your hand, your right hand to support your neck, to support your head. If you had blocks or extra cushions, you might want to bring your elbow onto them and then support your head. So the notice, noticing the sensation in the right thigh and the right side of the of torso. So no compression in the belly. And then slowly Tracing your steps back to come out of the pose, removing, so taking the right hand back, slowly lifting yourself up to come up, sitting upright. And as you sit upright, stay there for a moment or two, just to recognize the sensation coming from either side of your torso. And slowly bring your right leg out, stretch it out and stretch the left leg out and just stay with your legs Straight, stretched out. Lovely. And then do the same with the left leg. So right leg goes over, lean back on your hands. And then so the left shin touches, crosses the right shin. So either staying here or bringing that left leg over to cross to come up. So right side may be different to left, see how you are. So rather than bringing it and tagging it in, try and bring it in on its own, on, 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 with the strength of the leg. And the reason why I say this is because you'll have, you'll have, you'll know the range of motion of your leg and how you, or your hip, how you do it rather than forcing yourself to, to come bring it in. So wherever it is, it's fine. Just be comfortable with everything that where you, uh, you are. So if you're not using the bolster in front of you, you might want to put it to the side of the right, to the right hand side.
So either up or you can bring it so that it's just sitting almost like in a triangle, sort of the, in the easy pose where your shins are just crossing. And then take your left arm up, extend your left arm up. Lovely. And then slowly go over to the right side. If you have your bolster here, I want to bring your, um, bend your right hand. And so rest your head onto your right hand. And still extending this left arm over if that's comfortable for you. If it isn't, just let it down. So do what, what's easy, what's good, what feels better and what feels good for you. And let every exhale be letting go. So as you exhale, let your sitting bones really drop down into the earth. Notice the stretch in the left side of torso, the left hip, the left thigh. And stay here for a couple of moments. If your arm becomes tired, just bend the left arm. That's it. Just over the head, supporting the head. Notice your breath. And slowly trace your steps coming out of the pose. Gently coming into a seated area, seated first. Just notice your shoulders, how they feel. Notice the side of the body the right and the left side of the body, how he feels. Undo the crossing of the legs, stretch your legs out in front of you. And then slowly it's come out of the, the pose. So what we'll do now is um, deer or variation of deer and pigeon, if you're okay with that. And if we have time, might do another pose afterwards, but uh, we'll see. And however you feel like that, that. So may want to use um, the uh, may want to use the bl uh, blanket if you wish to you may not want to it depends on how you want to feel so sitting sort of that your hips are a little bit um, so your feet are hip distance apart or wider and then turn towards so the right um, uh, leg turns outwards and the left leg turns inwards. And then just support yourself to come up into seated. Lovely. So you can stay here, make sure that there's no sensation in the knee here at all, in either of the, the legs. But you can stay here, or you can just rotate your um, torso a little bit towards the right. 
so towards the right knee. Now, without putting any, any compression over the, so without any stress over the baby, over the belly, so slowly rolling yourself a little bit forward. So sort of forward, but not really forward, more sort of 45 degrees or 45 or I don't know what, what this is, sort of five to 12, <laughs> if that's the. So just kind of over your knee, but without putting too much stress over the, the belly or without putting any stress over the belly. So you can stay in this position or you can use your bolster and put it in front of you and just rest your elbows on the bolster. And with the elbows resting on the bolster, you might be able to put your head down as well. Now here, you might want to play with the opening of the right leg. So your right leg, uh, your right hip may be opened, may need to open a little bit more. So you might want to turn it out a bit more if you wish to. So to allow your belly to go down to Kind of rest down so that there's no compression at all. And at the same time, notice that you don't have any sensation in the in your um, back leg or the left leg or left knee. And notice the stretch along the left side of the torso. Now, if you put a bolster sort of towards that it's resting on the sort of that it's in line with the, um, the right knee. You may be able to turn sideways so that you lay on top of bolster and so with the belly onto the side, there's enough space. Now see if that's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, don't, don't do it. In this kind of way, you will get more sensation or more stretch alongside the whole of left um, of left of your left um, side of your uh, back, um, going into the sacroiliac joint, and perhaps some stretch along um, the left thigh. The outer left thigh, and as well on the the right glute. So just notice the feelings. Notice what's good, what's not good. If you feel that it's not comfortable, then back out a little bit. Change the pose.
And then slowly push yourself to rise up. Lovely. And then coming seated, get your legs back to center or to wider and just turn them a little bit sideways. So just kind of flushing as if you, the um, wipers in your, um, on the car, just getting them one side, one turning out, one turning in. And then when you're ready, just internally rotate the right and externally the left thigh. So I'm just going to turn over so you can see what I'm doing, um, but you stay where you are. So the rotation of the, the leg and opening the, of the, the hips and the legs here is, it really depends on how you, how you much you, you can go. Don't go, as we said earlier, uh, don't go with full extent completely because you want to go with sort of two, two mild um, sensation to get a mild sensation in this opening here rather than um, too much of a sensation. And then use the bolsters and, and the props so that you can lean over onto the bolster, so allowing the belly to come in between the opening of the legs and just allowing yourself to lean onto the bolster. So if the bolster is supported even better, if not, it's okay, so long as you're comfortable with it. And just release down. Again, notice the sensation in the right side of your torso, the right hip. Maybe the lower back. Maybe the, the left glute as well. And slowly lift yourself up, if that's so. And come up into seated pose. Use your bolster to support it, to support it up so that it's um, in, you're able to go into reclining uh, position into Baddha or butterfly pose. But use your legs again to just kind of do the, uh, move your hips and the knees from one side to another. And then come into supported butterfly pose, making sure that you've got enough support. So bricks, 
bolsters, other bolsters, cushions, or whatever it is that you have, so that it, this is that it's enough supported enough. Use the blanket if you wish to cover your legs. And stretch your legs first to start with. So stretch your legs after the pose. Stretch your legs to start with. Have you got cushion or a blanket to put to put under your on top of the bolster? Your head is a little bit back, so you might want to bring it. Sorry. <laughs> so something like a cushion. That's it. That's better. So then that you can rest your legs first with the stretched legs out just to notice the how the pose or the benefits of the pose, the previous pose, what you were feeling now. And so what I'm saying about the fascia coming back to its normal state. And slowly bringing yourself aware of the breath, the sensations. Then if you're happy to go into Baddha Konasana, then if you want to bring the feet together and then just release the thighs and the knees out to open. Make sure that your belly, sorry, your lower back is supported. And is resting against the cushions. And then place your hands onto your belly or perhaps one hand onto your belly and one hand onto your chest and notice your breath notice your breath amongst all these noises that are coming from outside the room. The noise is coming from my room. Notice as you inhale your chest expanding perhaps belly expanding. Notice as you exhale your belly perhaps dropping down a little bit and then chest dropping down. And so breathe from your heart to your belly and to your baby and from your belly, from your baby to your heart.
Make a space between your lips. Next time you inhale, inhale through your nose and exhale through your lips. Let your lips become soft. Let your breathing be soft. And slowly release your arms, release your hands. Become aware of your physical position. Bring your hands onto your thighs and gently close the thighs, bring the feet down onto the ground. And slowly turn over to the side. Perhaps staying laying down on the side if you can, or come up when you're ready, come up into seated pose. So inhaling arms up, and as you exhale, hands down the center line, down to your chest, perhaps down to your baby. So thank you to yourself and to your baby. your beautiful body for being here and I thank you for being part of the tonight's class. I'm so 